Hi there, it's Dr. David Green, founder and CEO of R3 Stem Cell, the global leader in regenerative therapies. All right, exosomes are the fountain of youth. Let me explain. So what are they? Well, they are underneath the umbrella of extracellular vesicles. They're very small. They're 40 to 140 nanometers in size, so they truly are nanotechnology. And they've been found to carry important cell signaling cues to other cells in the vicinity. So they're very active in what's called cell-to-cell -cell communication. Scientists call that paracrine signaling. They were first discovered back in the 1980s, and they contain proteins, RNA, cytokines, growth factors, amino acids. All of our body secretions contain exosomes. Semen, amniotic fluid, blood, breast milk, lung fluid, you name it, okay? Now, they're, on, they're not all the same. A lot of what they contain depends on where they come from, so we have to be careful about that. Now, they're lipid-bound, kind of like a fatty uh, bound. They're secreted by cells into the extracellular space. There are three main subtypes of extracellular vesicles. There's microvesicles, then there's exosomes, which what is what we care about, and then there's apoptotic bodies, which are dead cells, okay? Now, how are they formed? Well, you can see here uh, there's a cell, and in it there's a multivesicular body, and that is liposomal bound, okay? It's formed by an endosome inside the cell route. Now, they're formed by inward budding of what's called the limiting membrane, and it matures into this, the multivesicular body, and eventually it gets excreted from the cell. We don't understand that process really well, okay? You can see here that a multivesicular body um, forms and then it migrates to the plasma membrane and it releases all of its contents, which includes exosomes, all right? And we just don't understand that process really well. What do exosomes contain? Well, it's a lot, and you can see inside an exosome here, there um, is a lot of um, enzymes, there's uh, signal transducers, um, mRNA, there's uh, tRNA, uh, there's actually DNA, there's amino acids, metabolites, um, billions of, of different uh, ingredients. Now, what do they do? Well, originally, they were thought to be basically the garbage truck of the cell, the cellular dumping, right? They put all the crap in there, and then it would just get excreted from the cell. We know that now that's not the case. Uh, as I mentioned, they participate in cell-to-cell -cell communication and includes promoting cellular repair, new blood flow, tissue growth. They help for maintenance of cells. They stimulate immune responses by acting as antigen-presenting vehicles, and they help promote myelin formation. So we use them a lot with neurologic conditions such as MS outside the United States, and it works great to help not only protect myelin, but help uh, reproduce it. All right, this is a study from back in 2005, so close to 20 years ago out of Stanford. And what they did was called parabiosis. They connected mice. They connected the blood flow of the mice. And it was by Rando and his group. They attached an old mouse to a young mouse with their circulation, so they shared a blood flow. Then they induced muscle damage in the old mouse, and they looked to see what happened, okay? And the, when the ones that were attached to the young mouse healed like gangbusters, much better than if it was just left to its own, you know, healing uh, devices. So that was incredible. And then they decided, you know what, let's do a part two, because we want to see if it's the stem cells from the young mouse in the blood going to help with the healing. So they radio labeled the stem cells from the young mouse and they found that none of them showed up in the repair. So what was it in the young mouse blood that was helping facilitate this muscle repair? And the thought process then and now still is that it's exosomes from the plasma. Okay? Now, Interestingly enough, over the last 20 years, there have been multiple new studies using parabiosis, old mouse, young mouse, together. And this one looking at heart failure, and they found that after only four weeks of a shared blood supply, 
it helped to heal the cardiac hypertrophy very well. All right. They did it again in the brains of old mice. Um, they looked at the performance. So they gave them various tasks to do. And the ones that got the young blood worked much better with the tasks than those who didn't. So the, it's as if the old brains were recharged by young blood, said the uh, main researcher. So when you look at the studies that have been done um, mostly in the United States, at Stanford and Harvard and others, um, they've been looked at, as I just mentioned, the heart function repaired nicely. Liver was another study at Stanford, worked amazingly well. Pancreas, another study with exosomes that showed remarkable regeneration. Muscle, as we talked about, and brain, okay? It showed increased function in the mice brain, and it showed increased lifespan of the mice compared to those who didn't get the young blood. So when you look at aging, as we age, we have less stem cells, less growth and survival factors, and we have more inflammation. Inflammation, or inflammaging, as scientists call it, is one of the chronic predictors of disease cancer, other chronic issues, um, and if we can keep that down, then it can help us age better. So when you look at the effects of the young blood or the exosomes, it created more neural stem cells, higher levels of synaptic activity, higher levels of genes involved in memory, and less inflammation of the brain. That combination led to much higher brain function in the mice, and it has those same effects in humans. So the old mouse and its brain are malleable and can be rejuvenated, all right? You can teach an old mouse new tricks, <laughs> all right? Young blood factors can reverse aging. Old blood factors, on the other hand, accelerate aging. So is it exosomes that are the fountain of youth? That is the thought process. They are acellular, they don't replicate, they're, they don't have a nucleus, and they're very active in cell-to-cell -cell communication, as I mentioned. Scientists call that paracrine signaling. So what are the potential roles? Well, scientists are looking at them as actually biomarkers of disease, drug delivery agents. You put the drug inside the exosome, and then it ends up getting attracted to, let's say, a tumor with its markers, and then it can release the anti-tumor uh, drug once it gets inside the tumor. There's potentials with various vaccines. We look at them right now. Exosome is the drug, okay? So for instance, IV exosomes in pigs support neuroprotection. Intranasal exosomes decreased autistic behavior in mice. Exosome injections in rats improved erectile dysfunction. Intranasal exosomes in rats also decreased addictive behavior. So a lot of different types of improvements. Here's a bunch of studies. Uh, this is just a few. There are hundreds and hundreds now. Uh, inflammatory diseases, diabetic complications, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, kidney failure, metabolic disease, musculoskeletal stroke, other neurodegenerative, lots of applications for exosomes. So here's some use cases, and I'll clarify this by saying we don't make claims in the United States. This is for procedures outside the United States, okay? We're in seven countries, so I want to make that clear. For aesthetics, we use it for hair regeneration, sexual health, as well as facial rejuvenation. It's very helpful for more collagen production to decrease wrinkles and help the skin have that glow and tightness, all right? Uh, we use it IV for anti-aging. It works well for autoimmune syndromes, organ failure, neurologic conditions, as well as, hold on a second, get my picture out of the way, topically for burns and for the face. All right, we can use it topically in the United States. For injection into joints, soft tissues, it's great for wound healing and aesthetics, as I mentioned, intranasal for neurologic and, and nebulizer for lung conditions. All right, so <clears throat> where do they come from? Well, when you manufacture exosomes, 
Remember, all bodily uh, cells release exosomes, but we don't care about all of them. We care predominantly about ones that we make from umbilical cord tissue, specifically the Wharton's jelly and the mesenchymal stem cells that come from the umbilical cord tissue. We culture those mesenchymal stem cells. The byproduct of that contains conditioned media along with billions and billions of exosomes. We then separate out the exosomes and we pull out water through tangential flow filtration and we get a nice concentrated exosome product either in a liquid form or we can uh, freeze dry it, um, keep the structural proteins intact and it makes a powder. So key things to know, they do not get rejected, they are immunologically privileged is what scientists call it. They've been very safe to use, they're very small, they're a hundred times smaller than stem cells. They're very active in cell-to-cell -cell communication. Scientists call that paracrine signaling. They promote tissue repair, regeneration, collagen production, and they're useful for many applications, as I mentioned. Intravenous, intranasal, direct injection, topical, nebulizer. We frequently use them together with mesenchymal stem cells, which is very different than most clinics because we know all this data and these research studies that are peer-reviewed and our experience shows that they work fast and they work amazingly well together with mesenchymal stem cells. Now we offer exosome therapy in seven countries, all right, USA, Mexico, Pakistan, India, Turkey, Philippines, South Africa continue to grow. We do offer free consultations globally. And give us a call at plus one for the USA, 844-GET-STEM. Also email us, info at r3stemcell.com. Uh, send us your WhatsApp number or however you want us to contact you. We have a large patient concierge team that will reach out to you to get your consultation set up. All right, thank you so much. All right, we offer exosome therapy in seven countries. You can see the seven countries here. We're continually growing. We've done over 25,000 regenerative procedures over the last 10 years. We are the world's busiest regenerative therapy clinics. We do offer free consultations globally. Simply call us at plus one for the USA, 844-GET-STEM, or email us at info at r3stemcell.com. Send us what's going on with you, uh, whatever you feel comfortable sharing, your contact information like WhatsApp, and we'll call you or, or contact you to set up your free consultation. Or you can email me directly, dgreen at r3stemcell.com. Visit us online at r3stemcell.com. We have over 800 educational videos on our YouTube channel. There's also a comprehensive consumer guide that you can download on r3stemcell.com. I wrote it. It's 300 pages on stem cells, exosomes, FAQs, and over 30 chapters on specific conditions. Thank you for watching.